Hello, everybody. Now I will get into a little bit of the scheduling with regards to the work breakdown structure. So there's a parameter out there that will hold the default working calendar for the system. What the default working calendar does for you is it sets up the standard day, the number of hours in the standard day, and the working days in the system. So as the work breakdown structure attempts to schedule your job, it's going to use this default calendar as a way to figure out how many hours are in a day and how many days are in a week that work can be scheduled. So this is a default parameter that's set up in the parameters area, it also is copied down to each project and can change on a project. So if I've got a standard calendar that is eight hours a day for five days a week, and that's what 99% of my projects would use, I may have one project where we're going to work four days a week and 10 hours a day. So I could have a separate calendar set up for that project associated to it, and then the work breakdown structure on that particular project will then schedule over four days and 10 hours a day instead of the standard. So some flexibility with regards to calendars and how they interact with the work breakdown structure. With regards to task constraints in your work breakdown structure, I would say this is a very light scheduling tool in Dynamics here. You have the ability to do all the hierarchical setup of your tasks and you have the ability to do predecessors. But as far as other constraints go and other constraints that you might be familiar with in the Microsoft Project, those constraints are not reflected necessarily in D365. So the predecessors are the only constraints that are out there. You can manage some of the dates out there yourself, so must start on or must end on a certain date, but there are no real constraint flags to flip for those other types of constraints that you might be used to running into. And then with regards to scheduling in the work breakdown structure, here's how each field in the work breakdown structure associates with the others as you change them. So when you're out there scheduling in the work breakdown structure, really you just need to change these fields, see how it reflects on the dates and how changing effort changes the duration, how changing the number of resources will change the duration and the date, figuring out how the interplay of these fields work. But this is the definition of how they work in the system. And we'll be able to take a look at each one of these guys in the work breakdown structure. And then secondarily, there's some auto scheduling features in the work breakdown structure that you can turn on and off as you're moving along. So auto scheduling is an option to turn on or off. So you can have it on and as you're entering predecessors, as you're changing effort duration, things like that, the system will automatically do the updates to the schedule as you are making those changes. So you can either have that on or you can have that off to start. There's a column in the work breakdown structure where we can show and hide scheduling errors. So you're manually manipulating the schedule, changing start dates and end dates. You might be violating the predecessor constraint. You might be putting float into the work breakdown structure and it's going to say, hey, there might be a scheduling error here. You can move this task up. So there's a little icon that will show you that scheduling errors exist. You can then have the option to fix all the scheduling errors that are in the WBS. So the system can then snap everything back into place based on the way it schedules the work breakdown structure, or you can fix the error on any particular task. So let's take a look at the work breakdown structure and see how this goes. So for this particular work breakdown structure, I've got eight hours a day. I'm going to change some of these to edit mode. And I'll start to change some of these hours. So you'll see as soon as I start changing, I have auto scheduling. I'll make sure that is on as I go through this. Let's see. So you'll see as I start to enter these hours, it's at least affecting my end dates right now. It'll basically affect the duration of the days as well to say, hey, I've got one resource at 24 hours. My calendar is a standard calendar, so this calculating that those 24 hours equals three days. Well, let's say I want to throw three resources at this. So now you'll see that the duration has changed and the end date has changed. So if I throw three resources at eight hours a day, I can get this done in a day. I can also start to set up my predecessors to see how this will work. So I'm going to conduct the webinar after I finish my dry run there. And you can see how the date snapped back for that. And I will say I can't do my dry run until I'm done with my, so I'll just use the parent task until I'm done with the parent task. And I'll say that this one's 
dependent upon the task above it. So as you can see, based on everything that I put in here, the dates moved around. Now I can come out here and I can change, let's say the start date on one of these. If I try to change the start date and I've got a predecessor set up, it'll do the validation and say, hey, you can't change that start date. If I try to change the end date, even let's say push this guy out as well. Get this guy out there. So you can see by changing some of these dates, I was able to force this icon out here for the scheduling error. So if you start to mess around with the start and end dates and you start pushing things around, it's gonna say, hey, there is an issue with this line. All it does right now is just give you an indicator to say the system is finding a scheduling issue with this. And then based on the auto scheduling, I can fix it and have everything snap back into place based on the dates. So you can fix the errors. So depending on how you want to build the schedule, you can turn off auto scheduling. You can hide your scheduled errors and you can build whatever schedule you'd actually like for your work breakdown structure. So very simple means of scheduling. Again, you really only get the predecessors with regards to task constraints, and then you have the ability to change effort, duration, number of resources to affect start and end dates in your tasks. Publish that guy as well.